All right, wow, I have Will, Caleb, Scott, and Park in studio with me right now. Hey, guys. What's, What's up? up? This is Colony House. Yeah, yes. Welcome to Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. You guys grew up, like, basically in Nashville, right? That's right. And this new album, by the way, it's so good. The Thank Cannonballers, you. I love it. The track, the Cannonballers track, which I'm going to play, is so good. It's such a jam. Thank you. So you guys really went back to your roots. Like your childhood uh, has influenced this album, right? right. Yes. Now, you, were you guys all like buds? You grew up together? I know you guys are brothers. Yeah. Um, but did you all grow up together? Is this like a, kind of a, a, a friend's band? <laughs> a uh, little bit. Well, it is in a way. Like we, I met these brothers probably uh, 12 years ago or something like that. And Park and I, the other guy in the band mm-hmm. are both from Knoxville, Tennessee. So it's like three hours away. And Nashville is kind of like the town a few hours away where it was like when I was 18, I was like, am I going to go to college or am I going to like move to Nashville and mm-hmm. like try to play music? It's like that like kind of yeah. shining yeah. star over in the middle of the state. And so uh, for me, I was like, I, I got to get out of here. I'm moving. So I moved over there. I got connected with these guys within the first like year of living in Nashville just through a friend and my friend, my first friend at school and their Our cousin. cousin. Yeah. Okay. And uh, wow. we ended up at a barbecue together and uh, I got shamelessly uh, kind of volunteered. They were like, we're t- we're, he was asking, we're trying to start a band and we need a guitar player. And my friend's just like, <laughs> Scott, Scott plays guitar. <laughs> Anyways, we end up doing that. Then years later, we meet uh, Park, actually. I just had heard of him in Knoxville at, like, kind of local musician and uh, in the scene whenever I was there, too. And then he also had moved to Nashville, and I was like, man, I know this guy from Knoxville. We've never met, but we have a ton of mutual friends. Like, mm. maybe he could open up our Knoxville show. Mm-hmm. So he came and opened the show, and then we met that night and kind of hit it off. And we, we found ourselves in need of a bass player at one point because our current guy was getting married. And uh, we just called him straight up and we're like, hey, could you come just jump on in the middle of a tour, like no rehearsal and just like start playing bass with us? And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I can do it. And then we were all super nervous because we had never done anything like that. before. And he comes out and on the first show just absolutely crushes it. And we never called the other guy back. (laughs) (laughs) I love that story. That's perfect. Nice. Now, is there any? Is there ever any brother drama in the band? Totally. All the time. <laughs> I love all the time. I, asked, I looked at you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're like, no, 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 you guys answered. All right, all right. Yeah, what's funny, though, is that it's, yeah, me and Caleb are the brothers, and then the other two people that fight just, almost as much is. Sometimes more. Okay. Sometimes more the is, okay. is the Knoxville boys. So okay. they're almost like the Knoxville brothers. Okay. It's, it's, it's about, yeah, it's kind of that. It's that's pretty the, even. That's the. Uh, the name of the game here, it's like, yeah, bro- actual brothers and then the Knoxville brothers. Okay. It's, like, it's about even on the... It's right. always the, petty, too. It's, it's it always of like course. the really other is. two people are rolling their eyes or laughing because yeah. of how ridiculous the fight is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the other two are in it, just yeah. stubborn, trying to win. You know? It probably brings a sort of authenticity, though, to the For band, sure. right? Absolutely. Like having your sibling, that's that's special, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Sure. Well, it's, hard yeah. to su- it's hard to sweep anything under the rug or let any like long-standing things like fester up. Okay, so the Cannonballers. How is this different from your other albums? It's better. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, no, uh, your newest al- your, your newest album is always your best album, right? Like, right. I mean, I think that's what you believe about your most yes. like recent work is like I I refined what I did before. Whatever it is, it feels like your best work yet. Whether it is or not to the fans, doesn't really matter. It feels for us what feels different is. You know, we had recorded all of our albums before this in Nashville, um, and we wanted to see what it was like to, like, do something totally different. So we recorded the whole thing with a new producer. His name's Chad Copeland, and we recorded it in Oklahoma and then also spent some time down at this amazing studio in El Paso uh, called Sonic Ranch. And it's just, like, in the middle of nowhere, this... 500 acre pecan farm that this guy tony has turned into state-of-the-art like studios nine nine different studios and uh wow it's just a magical place where there's literally i mean there's hardly cell service down there so you are just like put it like horse with blinders on like it's Mm -hmm. all about from you know sunrise to sunset and beyond about making the music and that's it that's all you're focused on so i think there was like a really deliberate 
um, mentality with this album. Like, we're, I think for us, we wanted to make sure the best version of the song was out there. You could re-record a song a hundred times oh. and it all be different every yeah. time. How do you know? You don't. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> if, you're, if we're doing that thing you were talking about earlier where you pull yourself out of the mm. situation and put yourself back in, it, it doesn't necessarily become what's the best version. It's just what version do you want? You press play for all these people and you get different reactions. And at the end of the day, everyone's going to have a different, you know, opinion on, mm-hmm. oh, I really like that. And they're like, honestly, it doesn't matter. Y'all just pick. They're both cool. Mm-hmm. That's mostly what it is. So, Including think, the four of you, right? Yeah, Is that absolutely. where the arguments come in? The Knoxville brothers? No. <laughs> a little, but yeah, yeah but like the, the good kind of disagreements yeah. of like we're working here playing tug of war to see which one, you know, yeah. ultimately gets the vote. Okay, let's talk about tonight. You guys are doing a show here in Toronto. It is the last show of the tour. How are you feeling? Are you guys beat? Or are you like amped and ready to deliver? Yeah, I think it's kind of nice. I mean, yeah, we did 34 shows, 35. Oh, Um, my God. So, I mean, definitely. Since February, right? Sorry, yeah. So, definitely feeling that. But also, it was nice to have four or five day break. And I feel excited to play another show. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, it was a tease ending. And we ended in Denver. And so. Okay. It was kind of nice to have a few days home with the fams, and then and then now and you're, you're back. Yeah, like so you yeah. had feel, a little kind excited. of a rest, like yeah. ready right. to amp up again. Right. Exactly. So um, tonight, when you're all your fans in Toronto are walking out of Axis Club, yeah. what do you hope they're saying about the show? I mean, how'd they do? Wow. That? <laughs> I think wow. the the spirit wow. of like for us, it's all about tearing down the perception that there's a wall between band and fan like for us it's all about erasing that so for me when people are leaving a show i hope they feel like it was a big group hug you know that's kind of like the cheesy way of saying it for the band is like obviously we want them to say that was the best show i've ever heard they were the tightest band like all the like we practiced they you could tell they put time and money into this Yeah. yeah of course yeah but what i want that to boil down to is they that just felt like a big group hug, uh-huh. just a family, a family gathering of sorts. Nice. So, I, I hope it feels light and yeah. and inspiring maybe, and hopeful. Maybe they leave with a new uh, a new best friend. Yeah, know, new well, love I'm, interest. I'm saying just from you guys being in here right now, I'm feeling the group hug vibe. Yeah, like right. you guys are so wonderful. Like you've <laughs> all you. been so genuine and so yes. pleasant and fun to talk to. Thank so you. thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank thank you. Thank you. Nothing this but the awesome. best for tonight at the Axis Club, uh, where you can see Colony House, and we are going to play their latest tune right now. This is Cannonballers, and it's on Indie 88. <laughs> On a car with a hundred different bumper stickers on in the left lane, crawling 58 on the freeway. Here's a ring and key chain, pressure in the blood. Can't slow down, I'm a time bomb ticking while I run with the loaded gun, staring at the sun. Got a blind eye, never hit the bullseye, just like acting tough. Why are you running? Hot top, Impala, blank checks and cannonballers. Heard the whistle blow from the Wabash. Can't borrow time with the court cash. La 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 Preacher, got yourself another seeker on the line. Could you make the time? I could use divine intervention, undivided attention. Someone needs to know. Yeah, I could look at the books and do my combinations. Starting jabs and books. The shallow conversations I can serve.